Our first question today is from Amanda, mm -hmm. and she asks, is dealing with fear a major way or the way for developing trust in God and confirming the goodness of God's character, as opposed to our parents' character and behaviour around fear? Mm. This is an interesting question because I feel there's so many things that we could talk about as a result of the question. Yep. Firstly, is fear the major way we can confirm God's character? I don't believe so, no, in, in terms of dealing with fear. Mm -hmm. um, dealing, dealing with fear does help us a lot to determine God's character, though, but there are many other ways we can also determine God's character. And the major way we determine God's character is by receiving love from mm -hmm. God and then we get a feeling about what God's character really is. Fear, obviously, is the preventing op operation of the soul that prevents us from receiving God's love. Yeah. And so, therefore, we do need to address fear if we're ever going to receive God's love. Now, she brings up an interesting thing about a parent's emotions, because if you think about all of the hurtful damage that parents have done to children, it's all based around fear. So, of course, when we process through or we release from our experience fear, then we can see very clearly a person who is afraid and their motivations and a person who is not afraid and their motivations. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, God is not afraid. So, therefore, God, does not have any, God doesn't have any fear and has never projected fear onto the planet. And none of our causal emotions are really related to God. They're related to humans' viewpoint of God yep. with regard to our relationship with God. And all of that is related to fear as well. And that is a lot about, again, our parents' fear. So it is very true that if we allow ourselves to experience fear and we allow ourselves to go through the emotional process of experiencing fear, then what will happen is that we will see clearly that God, logically and also from our feeling-based relationship with God, we'll be able to determine that God is not a fear person, not a, a, an entity that's based around fear. Yeah. And, uh, and that God is only love, and we will then come to trust that much more easily because we can feel that God is never motivated by fear in anything that God does. Mm -hmm. Whereas with our parents, most of our mistrust with our parents began with the fact that they were motivated by fear under certain circumstances. So there were times when they loved us, and then when they were motivated by fear, generally they did not love us. And in fact, it's impossible to love while you're motivated by fear. So every single time they were motivated by fear, they didn't love us. And what we got to see was that fear became the dominant aspect of their personality and nature, and the fact that in the sense that it, it was used as a tool mm -hmm. to justify their unloving behaviour towards ourselves. So their avoidance of fear in that case. Their avoidance of fear, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you could say they're using honouring fear as their God mm -hmm. caused them to choose fear over love yeah. and that caused a lot of hurtful damage to their children, yeah. of which we are some. Yeah. And now, now, once we have that damage and we receive that damage, we start to mistrust our parents and we learn to mistrust our parents because we know that every time our parents act in harmony with fear, they become untrustworthy. Mm -hmm. Right? Just like anybody who acts in fear becomes untrustworthy. And in fact, it is impossible to trust, to fully trust a person who acts in harmony with fear. So any person who lives in fear and who acts in harmony with fear will always at some point act out of harmony with truth and love. Yeah. And so they become very untrustworthy. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, God never does those things. And so once we've felt through the experiences of our own past fears that we haven't released, we start to see that God is trustworthy. We can always trust God because God never acts in harmony with fear or, or, or has fear as his God. <laughs> but rather, God always acts in harmony with love. And therefore, we know we can always trust that person. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting what I find on earth with regard to trust. A lot of people trust people, other people, who are totally untrustworthy because they honour fear. Any person who honours fear at any level is untrustworthy. Yeah. You can't trust them. You can't. As soon as they honour truth and do not honour fear, now you can trust them. Mm -hmm. So trust is built by, per, by, the, by observing that the person is always acting in harmony with truth and love. True trust, that is. Yeah. But I find it interesting on earth that a lot of people do not analyse trust in that regard. They believe they can trust their family members 
when their family members have actually proven themselves untrustly, untrustworthy by proving that they are going to operate in fear at some point. Mm -hmm. So they've proven themselves untrustworthy. And it's pointless trusting a person who's already proved themselves to be untrustworthy. Yeah. So if we were truly focused upon um, understanding the relationship between fear and trust, we would see that any person who is in harmony with fear and acting in harmony with fear is always going to be untrustworthy mm -hmm. and we cannot trust them. And God is not a person who acts in harmony with fear ever yeah. and so therefore is always trustworthy. Yeah. But we will not feel that until we've worked through our own fear. So Amanda, Amanda's um, question is really hitting on something important then mm -hmm. in, in that she's highlighting that when we live in fear, we have an inherent mistrust of God mm -hmm. because... And we trust people who actually are untrustworthy. We do both. Yes. Mm. And why do we, why do, we do that um, second thing? Well, mostly because we've been taught to do so. We've been taught that there are some things that our parents are allowed to get away with, even though they felt at the time to be very unloving towards ourselves, yep. we, we are taught that that's normal. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, if a parent's afraid for our life, then it's okay for them to hit us. Yeah. That's what we're taught. Yep. Now, God doesn't hit us on any occasion, even when God observes our life. And God's not afraid of our life because God created an eternal existence. Yep. So God's never afraid of us dying yep. and therefore would never, you know, use violence as a method of preventing our death. So, you know, we see a very, very different viewpoint from God versus our parents. Mm -hmm. But we've been brought up with parents who justify the use of fear mm -hmm. and who then call it love. And so we now have a very distorted viewpoint within us of fear versus love, fear versus truth. And, and because of these distortions, and as we've talked about before, these distortions are a major cause of our emotional difficulties. Yeah. So because of these distortions, the majority of people on earth are very confused when it comes to love mm -hmm. and also they do believe that fear and love can exist side by side yeah, and they cannot. Yeah, simultaneously. Yeah. yeah. So basically you're saying that we've been taught to believe that the way our parents behave is love and yet that we have an inherent mistrust of that because they have often been acting in fear mm -hmm. uh, and when people act in fear, they're not consistent and they often react in an unloving way. Mm -hmm. But as a child, we can't really comprehend the difference. Well, I do believe as a child we can comprehend the difference. Mm -hmm. Like when we connect with the childlike feelings inside of us about our parents' treatment of ourselves, most of the time we will be able to actually feel the fact that we couldn't trust our parents to actually not be violent. We couldn't yes. trust our parents to not somehow manipulate us emotionally. We couldn't trust our parents to act in harmony with love under all circumstances. We, we do feel those feelings, but we suppress them. We suppress them because we're invested in avoiding the pain of that experience. Correct. And, you know, as we've discussed in the sessions about how the human soul functions, every time we want to avoid pain, we will revert to suppressive techniques, mm -hmm. which are all about our addiction. So we enter addictions with people in order to prevent our fear. Yeah. And the majority of us have entered addictions even with our parents. Mm -hmm. And in fact, our addiction response to our parents is a direct response to their addictions with us. Yeah. And we often have entered into addictions with our parents. And then of course, whenever those parents didn't meet those addictions, we then sought another person to do so. Mm -hmm. So many of us are in, currently in a relationship with another person, a partnership relationship, where we're actually getting most of our addictions met and, uh, and this makes us feel quite happy, but the reality is that we're not really happy. We've still got all of these emotions inside of us and fear is still quite dominant in our lives. Still governing everything. And then so that constitutes a major block towards God because we, we don't, just as we have a sense that what happened in our childhood from our parents was not loving mm -hmm. and we're afraid to, to really... Um, explore that and release that, mm -hmm. then that gets projected upon God. We think, can mm. we really trust this person that we can't even see? Mm. And so... But it makes a, doesn't make much a logical sense if you think about it. For example, it makes a lot more logical sense to, to see that God must be far better than any human mm -hmm. and therefore far more loving than any human. And therefore it's very illogical for us to attribute 
to God emotions that we feel about our parents. But most of the time we do that to avoid the emotions that we feel about our parents. Yeah. In other words, we go, no, our parents loved us. It's God that didn't love us. Yes. Rather than going, no, that's actually <laughs> incorrect. It's our parents who didn't love us and God has loved us all of this time. Yeah. And it's just that we now feel that that's not true because of our parents' projections and other fear-based emotions that they've had causing us now to live in our own fear. Mm. So, the, so yes, the answer to Amanda's question is yes. If you feel your fear and experience it and go through it and come out the other side of your fear, you will have a very, very good uh, opinion of God. Yeah. You'll also have a very accurate opinion of your family and your, and your parents, but it won't be a, necessarily a good opinion. Yeah. It'll be an accurate opinion in the sense that you'll know when, you'll know under what circumstances they are willing to compromise love. Mm -hmm. So for example, with my father, I know that he, on earth, my father on earth, I know that he will compromise love whenever his religious beliefs are confronted. Yeah. So in other words, whenever he gets confronted from his belief systems, he will always sacrifice love. I know that mm -hmm. from his behavior with me. And I've known that for a long time. I know that he does it with other emotions too. And I know with my mum, whenever she's confronted by fear, she will always withdraw love. Yeah. She will always go back into her shell. She will always not be loving to, an, to another person, including myself. So I know whatever issues she's afraid of, she can't love me. Mm -hmm. I know that. Mm -hmm. Now, when you know that, you know what bits of the person you can trust and what bits of the person are not trustworthy. Yeah. Because any time their fear is triggered, they become not trustworthy if they honour their fear over truth. And God doesn't have fear, so God always is truthful, and so therefore God is always trustworthy. Yeah. And any person on earth who, who, the persons on earth who are the most trustworthy are those who have the least fear. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and yeah. obviously there's very few of those. Very few, because mm. even people who are present the facade of being quite fearless mm -hmm. are often full, full of, fear, of fear. Full of fear. And yeah. particularly emotional fear. Yeah. So they might present a bravado, particularly with physical things that they're not afraid of. Mm -hmm. But emotionally, they're often full of fear. Yeah. And when it comes to relationships, you see them act out these fears. You see the toughest of men not wanting to open their hearts to their wives. Yeah. So that shows you that they're very, very closed emotionally and therefore very afraid yeah. of opening their hearts to the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. So so you know that fear under those circumstances will trigger their actions. Mm -hmm. Put them in a certain circumstance and they'll act a certain way and they are, it's not possible for them to love you while that fear exists within them. Yeah. 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 With God, it's always possible for God to love us because no fear exists mm. in God. Mm. Mm. And working through our fear specifically with our parents, is going to open our hearts up to receiving that truth. Yes, and, and probably be more accurate to say working through our fear about any subject <laughs> will open our hearts more to the truth about God's nature. Mm -hmm. When we are full of fear ourselves, we, we, are become, we become afraid of a punishing God yeah. and we become afraid of a God that doesn't exist actually. So in other words, we, we basically believe that God's a certain way when God isn't. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and obviously that is going to cause a distortion and, uh, in our relationship with God and make, it, and make a relationship with God very, very difficult. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Great. Thank mm. you.